Gunman Michael C. here with the Competitive Rifle Podcast. As I've said before, if you're going to be a competitive shooter, you're also going to be a reloader because that's how you're going to get the best accuracy for your rifle by getting an accurate load. One of the keys to getting an accurate load is going to be a weighed powder charge. If you use a progressive or just a throw type lever, a powder thrower, you're going to get a weight by volume, as I was, a charge by volume versus weight. Um, first thing that you've got to do with these is calibrate your scale, uh, which I did in part one of the video. Uh, go check that out. And uh, again, this is a RCBS unit that I've had for 14 years. Still working great. Zero complaints about it. The only complaints I've ever had about it, had a piece of dog hair there. The only um, complaint um, I've ever had about it is things that I've done myself. One thing you do have to uh, remember and be cognizant of is that this unit works on, if you can see the little hole right there, there's one hole, there's two. Well, one's a uh, infrared light unit, and there's one over here also. We'll move this out of the, out of the way just a little bit so you can see it on the side of the scale. There's a little IR light there also because these are talking to each other. And make sure when you mount this, see how I've got the wire bent back so it keeps that light clean. Clear. When I first had it, I kept getting an interruption. I couldn't figure out why, and it's because where the natural trail of that wire wants to go was getting in the way. So let's move on here. What we have to do is we turn on our scale, which is already turned on. And now we're going to want to calibrate this for the trickle. So we put cal, but we're not calibrating it for weight. So we want to say no, because we're calibrating it for the trickle. Now print, we're not going to be printing anything out. Again, we say no. Now it says trick. That's for trickle. That's what we want to calibrate. So we say yes. Okay, once the light starts flashing, we're good to go. Now, the next thing that we have to do is turn on the RCBS Powder Pro Master. We do that by this high-tech operation of plugging it in. Why they didn't put a uh, uh, scale, uh, uh, on off button on that, I don't know. Now what you have to do is position these so that the scale is solid. If it's blinking, let me see if I can get it to blink here. There we go. See how it's blinking now? It's letting you know it can't see the scale. So we move it back. Light is solid again. And when you position these, you want to position the trickler. Those little throw levers as it was, those little holes that the powder is going to go out of. You want to put that under this tray. Otherwise what's going to happen is the powder is going to build up on one side or the other. It's going to overflow. You will not get a correct throw and I will find a picture of one that was incorrect because I've done it before where the powder is overflowing the side and you don't want the powder on the table you want it in the pan or in your ammunition so the next thing we've got to do is we have to calibrate this our CBS was thinking maybe this is why it didn't have an on off switch because they put this button on here for calibrate so we hit calibrate and now we just sit back and enjoy watching the powder flow and what's happening along the way is you see the scales going the RCB the uh, powder pro master is learning this powder that's in here this is an extruded powder that we have in there so it's learning how to throw it and it has the two different little arms as it was holes dispensers in there you know as you can see one throw the one on the right throws out a whole bunch the one on the left 
it really kind of triples it. Now, RCBS and Hornaday make this same type of powder unit with a digital scale in an all-in-one case. If you happen to get these where they are separate, like this unit, remember that these, I believe they're called inverters here, I plug into my wonderful octopus over there, they're of a different uh, voltage and amperage, so you've got to label them. I was having a problem shortly after I got the units and thought I had memorized how to use it and I wasn't following the directions anymore. Couldn't figure out why the thing wasn't working. Well, what had happened is I plugged the Powder Pro Master into the scale and the scale into the Powder Pro Master. So it wasn't quite getting, one was getting too much juice, the other one wasn't getting enough juice. I mean, I just wrote on there, if you can see it, one says scale and one says powder. That was my scientific way of doing it. So we're watching it. It's still calibrating. So you can see the light's flashing. It's telling you what it's doing. And the scale, um, for me, I have not found a set weight that it stops at. It usually seems to be anywhere between 60 and 80 that it stops. And uh, I'm just assuming that uh, it's doing that because it runs through some different cycles as you heard it go slow and then go fast again it's just it's learning that powder and because I positioned the pan properly it's piling up all nice and neat right there in the middle right where we want it to and let me think of something else well I did buy this scale a um, long time ago I uh, before <laughs> before the internet I actually did get this at Brownells I forget how much I, I paid for it but uh, it's been well well worth it okay um, sure enough okay we've stopped now calibration is solid red yeah, we've got that 89 so what we got to do now I'm obviously I'm not reloading 50 cal here so I'm not going to throw a charge of 189 grains of anything I take this, pour it back in the scale as it was, the funnel, put it back in here, and that zeroes back. If it doesn't zero back, uh, sometimes they, they will get a little bit uh, finicky if things get bumped around. All you have to do is you hit zero again, and it zeroes out on the pan. Just remember when you do hit zero, make sure your pan is on there. and. Uh, what we've got to do now is we need to set our charge. In this case, it's going to be 24 grains. So 2, 4, point, 0, enter. Okay. 2, 4, point, 0, enter. There we go. I was a little bit too fast. I didn't wait for that memory button to come on. But Make sure that nothing came out. Okay, nothing came out. This is like real life reloading here. So now I hit dispense. Dispense button starts flashing. And when the unit is ready, it starts dispensing your powder. Now, granted, these electronic uh, powder masters and scales take longer than a regular throw type. But uh, when you're dealing in an extruded powder, um, or any type of powder, as, as far as I'm concerned, for dealing a long-range load, um, you're going to want to do it by weight. Now I put in 24. Sure enough, there's 24. Uh, as you can see, it took maybe a second or two for it to uh, uh, capture the whole thing. But now I'm 100% sure that that's a 24 rain load and while we're here let me also show you what I do to uh, load these I use got your handy dandy paper plate and for a loading block I have we're gonna do two two three this is a old uh, nine millimeter case which works perfect because you've got holes in the middle because eventually sometime you're gonna have a double charge 
and you're going to double feed yourself. Put the cases here on the paper plate so if I get a double charge or I spill some powder I can take that powder put it back in the scale and what I use I use a Saturn it's an aluminum funnel it does a lot better job than the plastic funnels that come with most reloading cases because those build up some static electricity so now we just take our powder here hold our pan throw our powder in and we can see the scale went to uh, negative 121 put that scale back on there zeroes out and then I just repeat the process with the dispense. So this was Michael C. the Competitive Rifle Podcast. For more information about reloading, go to the uh, Reloading Podcast on the Firearms Radio Network. Uh, you can buy everything that you've seen here except for the paper plate and the loading block from uh, Brownells. Brownells uh, supports uh, all the podcasts on the Firearms Radio Network. Go there for all your reloading needs, plus they have the best customer service in the industry and with that I'm going to finish my project here of reloading and I'll show you one th little trick that I did have to learn see like right here I'm looking for 24 grain. Oh, there it goes goes to 24 grains you let it sit there and it zeroes on out so with that I now have 100 cases here I've got to reload and now the fun begins. So go out, um, go ahead, get one of these for your uh, precision rifle shooting, and you will enjoy it. And well, let me show you one other thing that I've done, which has kept this um, unit in such good shape. Is I have a box. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's a box. And whenever I'm not using the unit, I always empty the powder out of the carrying uh, the uh, uh, container here, put it back in the appropriate container, store it properly. I cover this, and what I also did on the box, so I never forget what I need to do to turn this thing back on, is I put the instructions on the top of the box. And what I also I do here, in fact, my whole bench here, what I do, um, when I'm doing any woodworking, I've, I've got some plastic and cover it up. But enough of that. Uh, it's time for me to get to work with this uh, reloading here. Uh, keep me away from the honeydew list. Alrighty. Until next time, this is Michael C. with the Competitive Rifle Podcast.